I guess you can everyone see okay. Let me go a little bit further. Um, all right, so today we're going to talk about databasing and drip campaigns, um, and also a little bit about the mobile app too. So the idea of using a database and these drip campaigns and the mobile app, this kind of stuff, is really for customer retention. When you have customers, the goal is never to do one transaction and never talk to them again. The idea is over the course of you know, a certain amount of years, you should be able to have regular influx with the same customers, whether it be second pieces of business with a rental, um, you know, selling a house, selling another house, you know, maybe selling their house back, um, or just, you know, that, that constant contact to the point where they're sending referrals. The thing is, once you have a customer and you do business with them, you already made a working relationship. You put in the hard work, you got the deal done, and you did something. So now they trust you, so you want to make sure that you're getting as much out of them as you can. All right? Um, so a couple of things. eEdge, when you log into your MyKW, that is the um, CRM, if you will, or database that is provided to you with Keller Williams City Life Realty. Um, a couple of key things. There are other third-party databases you could use out there. Um, the only thing I don't like about eEdge is that it can't send you reminders unless you pay for eEdge Pro, which is expensive. Um, so in that case, you can go in and check your reminders every day. If that's something that you want to do, uh, you can do that. But if not, you could always look into a third-party website. Everybody that's in coaching knows I always recommend Insightly, um, which is a nice free one that does send you email reminders with dates that you set. Um, once you guys start producing and, and, and generating you know, money that you want to put back into it, there's a couple other bigger ones like Contactually is what I use. I love it. Um, top producer, you know, so on and so on. Um, Contactually is great though if you guys ever want to look it up. Um, so with that being said, everything's pretty much the same. A database, the key things that you need in a database is what? First name, last name, phone number, email, notes, and reminder. That's it. You need to know who it is, how to get in touch with them. The notes is what they did, who they are, because, um, and then the reminder, obviously. So it tells you when to contact them again. Um, make sure you take good notes, because if you get a reminder, no one's going to be like, oh, Paula, I sold her a house three years ago at 226 Jefferson. You know, you want to make sure that you have good notes so you're able to stay on touch. Um, you never want to make that phone call to somebody or have somebody call you that you sold a house to or did a rental with or something like that and be like, hi, how can I help you? And they're like, but Blake, it's me. Um, you want to make sure that you have all that information ready to go. So when do you put people in your database? Um, you don't want to just throw every lead that you get into a database, um, maybe a drip campaign or, or it's some kind of temporary group. But you want to make sure that you're not filling your database with every email that comes in because if they're not prospective pieces of business, it's not going to work out. For example, if you have a bunch of renters that came in and they end up renting something else or something like that, it's not something you're going to want to you know, clog your database with. Your database wants to, should be the main focus on who you're doing business with or who you have a prospect to do business with. Um, so would that be anybody that you meet? Anybody that you go out and meet on an appointment or showing or anything like that, that's somebody for your database. Um, so very simply here, your EH control panel is integrated with our KW backend site. Um, so once you have it all set up, you do it here. If you guys are brand new agents, you have to make sure you do the Scott Leroy questionnaire. That's what sets all of this magic up so you can get into dot loop and do your paperwork and have everything ready. So basically once you're in here, it has my contacts. You hit these little plus buttons here, add new contact. You get the spinny wheel. And it'll pop up eventually. Sometimes it takes a little longer, but it'll pop up. Uh, but you want to make sure here. So they have a ton of different things in here. This is another thing with eEdge. eEdge as a database, they have a lot of fields for you to fill in. Like I said earlier, to me, a complete contact in a database is first name, last name, email, phone number, notes, and reminder. Um, here they give you other options, which could be good. You know, you have your time frame, what they are, you know, buyer, seller, agent, investor, um, you know, home phone, cell phone, fax number, if that's even a thing anymore. Um, you know, their birthday, their purchase anniversary. These are some good things to have, too. So... It never hurts to send out a birthday card or have a phone call. You know, hey, Pat, 
happy birthday, you know, how's everything going in the house, blah, blah, don't forget, I work mainly off of referrals, so if you know anybody, feel free to send it my way. So you get that nice touch in there, and then also you're getting the backup with um, asking for that referral and reminding somebody that they worked with you. Most people, especially renters, after a year, they can't even tell you who their agent was, you know, if you're not doing this regular follow-up. So it's really important to get this regular follow-up in, right? So they have all these options you can fill in, you fill it in, you hit save, they're in your database. Congratulations, that's how this works. Um, so it's really, really just as simple as that. Guys, I was just saying from your e-edge, you just hit my contacts there and you could add contacts in just like that. Um, some of these other things in here, you guys can check out. We do tech classes on most of this, the marketing pieces and stuff like that. Um, your email, access your email, our KW emails are Gmail, so you can go to gmail.com and log in that way instead of doing it through here. Through here, it's a little too many steps for me. Um, so your contacts are there. Now, once your contacts are in here, what do you do with them? Or any CRM or database, what do you do with them? You have to have reminders or tasks or something, because that's the point of being in there. If you have a database with 10,000 people in it, that's great and good. If you never call them, it's basically just an Excel spreadsheet. You want to make sure that you're setting these tasks and reminders to follow up. Like I said, with eEdge, they don't have reminders unless you pay for Pro. You could add a reminder date, but when that reminder date comes, nothing happens. So it's not really the most functional. Um, but like I said, that's why there's third-party things like Insightly. Insightly is a great free one that does have reminder dates for free um, or contactually, which I'll show you guys a little bit of before we end today. Um, but through eEdge, what do you do with these contacts? What's an easy way to do follow-up? We call them drip campaigns. So drip campaigns, what it is, they're automated messages, whether it be emails or phone calls or you know whatever. They have mixes with mailers and different things. So the way you're gonna do drip campaigns is right from here, you hit the little plus under my marketing, and it says manage and create campaigns. So when you click on that, it's gonna take you to a screen and show you all the active campaigns that you have. Drip campaigns aren't really made for your entire database. They're supposed to be targeted. They're supposed to be there for a reason. You're coming from a place of contribution. If you just send it to everyone that you ever met, chances are you're gonna get a lot of unsubscribes through it. So try to do it as more, more targeted things, and I'll explain what the different types that they have are. Um, so you just hit create new campaign. These are all of them. There's 57 different campaigns that Keller Williams has preloaded. They update them pretty regularly. Um, and they're all for different topics. So that's, there's three main kinds. There's the 12 direct. What a 12 direct is, that's once a month for a year. So that's one of the more passive campaigns. The idea of that is maybe somebody who's not ready to buy or you know maybe someone that you already closed with or you want to stay in touch with, something like that. Um, this way they're getting something from you on a regular basis, but you're not you know, in their inbox or on the phone with them every, every week. You know, they don't want to talk to you every week, but you want to stay on top of them. Um, some of the 12 direct campaigns that are pretty good is the did you know. It's like quirky little facts. So it sends them once a month. It'll be like, did you know that well, vinegar takes stains out of carpets? And then it's like, <laughs> you know, kind of something like that. But the bottom line is that it's branded with your face, with your name, with your phone number, with Keller Williams. So even if someone just opens it up, you know, or says, oh, you know, here's Blake with stupid facts again, um, uh, <laughs> that they're going to still get something from you and you're coming across their mind. You know, so once a month they get it, even if they're just like, oh, Blake emailed me again and deletes it, they still thought about me. So, and it's automated. You set it and it just happens, okay? So those are 12 directs. Another one they have that I actually use pretty often, do, 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 unless they got rid of it. Um, this, well, seasonal tips, this is about your house. Um, so they have just different things. This includes some holiday stuff. So just make sure if you're going to be using this as a template that you're not double down. So if you have somebody on a seasonal campaign where they're getting a Merry Christmas email through the campaign, don't send them another Merry Christmas email because then they're gonna realize, hey, this guy is just sending me automated stuff. Um, but what this looks like, I'll go through how to set this up in a minute, but what it looks like is just like this. Spring is here, helpful tips to uh, helpful hints to get your home ready for the summer. Just a couple little things. Boom, boom, boom. There's your name, email, all that kind of stuff. You know, call me today. So again, it's about the branding. And this is something that is just going to happen automatically. Um, and it'll go through every single month you'll get something. 
So that's a 12 direct. They have this month in real estate, which is a pretty good one. It talks about national stats and what's happening nationally. Um, be careful with any of these marketing materials that are like this month in real estate or some of the newsletters, because keep in mind, they are national stats. They're not for Hoboken, they're not for Hudson County, they're not you know, for North Jersey. Um, so you wanna make sure if you're sending them out to people, it's kind of explained. Because if you send, I mean, a lot of you guys work with uh, sellers or buyers. If you send them an email saying the average home price is 210,000, what are they gonna do? They're gonna laugh at you. <laughs> so make sure you explain that they're you know, national stats. Um, 33 touch campaigns, that's like the grand poobah of drip campaigns. That is just a constant, constant um, kind of array of things. Most of them are a mix, so they'll get, um, I think it's 11 or 12 direct emails. There's uh, eight or nine or 10, They're, they vary activity steps, which is a phone call, you know, they have different things. And when they include the phone calls, what's kind of cool is they tell you what to say. But again, keep in mind, you don't get a reminder. So you have to put the activity steps on your um, actual calendar to put it in. But it'll say on day 57, it'll be like, call them and talk about, hey, did you ever get my mobile app? And it has a whole script there for you to say. So it is automated. You're just going to have to, when you set this up, you probably want to put on your calendar for whatever day that step is supposed to go off on, make trip campaign phone calls. Then you could go back in, see who's on it, call them up and get the activity step done. Um, but yeah, 33 touch, that's over the course of a year. They're going to get 33 touches from you, 33 hits, whether it be a phone call, um, an email, a Christmas card. It tells you what to do when you set it up, but that is all in one year. That's a lot. It's, a, it's an aggressive campaign, but you know, it's, it's something that's available. Uh, 33 touch campaign you could do with you know pretty much anybody your sphere anyone you're active with you know long-term active buyers and then even after they close or they buy they're still on a touch that they go through um, past clients that are in your database I mean it's, it's pretty broad with 33 touch just make sure that you're not gearing it towards those people that don't want to hear from you all the time you know it's good for like those needy customers you have that call you every day. It's like, hey, here you go. Now you'll hear from me 33 more times. Um, the eight by fours are specialized. So this is, you know, introducing yourself to a new market, stuff like that. So you're not really gonna use those that much. Um, the eight by eight campaign, this is my favorite. I use this almost all the time. Um, I send this out like every month to people. So what I do with an eight by eight campaign with my buyers, they also have one for sellers. The idea of the 8x8 is that they're going to get one email a week for two months. This is great for cold buyers, people that you're not actively working with. I would not recommend it for people that you're actively showing because you don't want to go out on a showing with somebody and then get back to their house and have an email. Like, now's a great time to buy. They're like, I know, we just saw the house. Um, but this is great for cold buyers. I pop them on it all the time. If people get aggravated, they could unsubscribe. Yeah, tough. There you go. Um, what it is, it talks about the reasons why it's a good time to buy. It talks about interest rates. It talks about home values going up. The longer that they wait, you know, it's going to go higher and higher. Um, but you can see they're nice little emails that look like this. It's a great time to buy. Low mortgage rate, home prices, owning versus renting is more affordable. And again, it's here. Again, this isn't something that you're expecting somebody to go in and, and use as their Bible and be like, oh, it's Monday. Blake's going to send me an email. The idea is, is branding. So even if that person, maybe they decided they can't search for a house right now or they're on hold or they want to look in the summer or in the spring, this is great for them because now every week they're going to get just a little something from you. So it's not obnoxious. You're not calling them 10 times a day, but it's that branding. They're going to see your name. They're going to see your email. They're going to realize you're in real estate and that you care enough to send them stuff. Um, so every week you'll see there's something different. Sometimes they have little videos about budgets and stuff like that. Um, so the thing is the did you knows and the 12 directs, that's really something where it's coming from a place of contribution. And you're like, hey, it's spring, congratulations, or you know, how to fix your tricycle. Um, whereas this is the person that's going to buy a house. This is someone's like, hey, we're doing this, we gotta do business, this is why. I mean, they're, they're pretty much directly set up to get someone to start working with you actively. Um, you'll see like I talked about before, here's uh, step four 
is an activity step. So this is where it says phone call, it says scripts my app. Um, another thing is please guys think of scripts. Scripts are a guide, they're a guideline. Um, I mean, really, if anyone calls and says, hello, this is Blake with Kelly Miller Williams Realty. I have some exciting news to share with you. They're gonna be like, click. <laughs> so it's a guideline. The idea is read this through and go and talk about your app. Hey, did you ever download my app? It's really awesome. You could search, it's connected to the MLS. It updates all the time, so you're not wasting your time looking at listings that are expired or no longer available or anything like that on Zillow. This is the best direct way to do it. Oh yeah, by the way, it works anywhere in the country. So even if you're visiting family in Florida and you want to know what the neighbor's house is worth, you could check it out. Um, my mother goes crazy with this thing. She's everywhere she goes. <laughs> <laughs> everywhere. Um, but this is the point that it's telling you. This is what you're going to call. This is what you're going to talk about. Again, email, email, email. Step seven, the last one. This is kind of the final. So after two months, I mean, the general idea is if you send someone an email once a week, called them twice over the course of two months, something's going on you're gonna to have to adjust. You can't just keep sending them a weekly email because it's not going to come across. That's not working if they didn't get converted over the course of two months. Um, so this last phone call is kind of like a what's wrong with you phone call. <laughs> but It's figuring out what's going on, what their information is. Um, it even has step-by-step -step questions and if they say yes, this is what you say. If they say no, this is what you say. Um, and the idea is you're either gonna end up just saying, great, you know, if you ever decide to look, please give me a call or you're gonna adjust and maybe put them onto a 12 direct. Oh, uh, you know, we're really thinking about looking next winter or something. Okay, great, you know, we'll stay in touch and we'll talk when you're ready. Boom, they go on a 12 direct. So it's that less aggressive, staying in touch. Um, so again, this is all here to be automated for you. Um, you know, we're human beings. I don't think anybody, even top producing teams, I don't think anybody wakes up and was like, oh, let me call Sharon. <laughs> you know, I haven't talked to her in exactly seven days. Um, so this has to be managed somehow, whether it's your minders through your database or an automated drip campaign. Um, to set these up, easiest thing in the world, you go here, you name it, you go to the next step, you just hit personalize. So when you hit personalize, you can see your information comes in pre-filled. Um, do go through and make sure that everything's correct. Sometimes they have, um, sometimes things are not correct. Like this one, they spelled Williams wrong in Keller Williams. <laughs> That's not great. Um, it is an automated system. It pulls information in. Computers are great and good, but it's going to happen. So what I like to do is I just go through, take a quick look, you know, correct. Um, make your corrections. Make sure your picture is right. And then just hit save. Save. It's going to yell at me because I already have this one named. Normally this goes quick. I don't know why it's taking so long to save. But once it saves, basically you're gonna go through each of those slides and just customize them through, make sure that everything's correct. You don't have to do that, but I really, really highly recommend just going through each one. If you take 15 minutes to make sure a campaign for the next two months is correct, that's much better than somebody opening it and realize you can't spell your own company name. <laughs> um, okay, now I'm trapped. Okay. Um, so once you go through, you customize all of those slides, you get to the end, you want to add those dates of the activity steps to your calendar, and then you just go in here. Pretty easy, you can just go through and add the people that are in your database. If you're using an outside CRM or database, you have to import them in here in order to automatically um, add it in like this. Quick tip. Uh, if you call eEdge and tell them that you have a spreadsheet that for some reason is not uploading and you send it to them, they do it for you. Just so you know. Uh, so yeah, the, the issue is with eEdge, they have a very specific um, column requirement for their contacts to import from a different CRM. So it has to be first name in one column, last name in another column, email, and it has to be labeled specifically. If your thing doesn't match that, like you have first and last name in one column, it will not upload unless you call them and send it to them and they just fix it for you. So that's always the quick way to do it. But um, yeah, so it won't follow specifically that. But like I said, with drip campaigns, you have to keep in mind, you're not sending this to 540 people. You should be doing this on a regular basis with contacts that fit into these buckets of 
how things have to be done. So it shouldn't be hard to, to drop in eight or 10 active buyers and, and throw them on here as they come in. Um, once you're done with this, you hit save and continue. You check out the little boxes and hit activate and then it's, it's launched. It always goes the day after you start it. So like when you hit activate, it's not shooting things out right now. It goes out the next day. So now you know with your activity steps, stuff like that, it's starting from the next day. Okay. Who is it? Um, do you guys have any questions about the drip campaigns? Yeah. Right from that, uh, right from that main screen when you originally went to here. So like I have a 12 direct active right now. This actually, this was during a class and I actually sent it out to everybody I had in my database, but a bunch of people, 25% of 2,384 people opened it. So that was a cool accident. Um, yeah, so they're here. You can cancel at any time. Also, these are 100% customizable. So say you want to do an 8x8 and you think one of the steps is stupid, you can delete that step. You can add in your own step with your own content. Um, you know, there's a, there's a ton of different things that you can do. You can also pay into this and have them send. Um, you can pay them and have them do the mailers through here. Never used the mailers through here yet. I'm not quite sure, but I know that it is an option that you can do the steps as direct mail as well as that, but they do have to have an address in their contact in the database, a valid address. Um, do you want to send your own email? And you want it as like an HTML or a JPEG, like a postcard, a graphic, you mm -hmm. want to do the emails so will pop up automatically. Can you upload the JPEG and use that as Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep, you could add any steps. Um, JPEG images will come up in the body of the email. PDFs won't, um, I don't think PNG files do either, but that's the format you really have to use, is you have to use JPEG. I don't, it does take HTML too, actually. I'm pretty sure it does, but I'll look into it and find J out a little JPEG. more. JPEG's how you do it, yeah. Even if you guys are using an email, that's you drop a JPEG right into it, that'll be in the body. Um, as far as video, embedded video, um, there's third-party servers you can use, like BombBomb. They're pretty good, and I think they're not that they're really not too expensive. Last time I used them, but um, but that's that's really the main idea. And again, this is all straight through your MyKW. You have your contacts here. Um, you could always hit View Contacts and kind of see everybody that's in here. But it's something that if you keep up on it, you'll be able to, you know, get a lot of passive money. Um, I actually started using a different one, but I really got into heavily following up with people. Um, and it tells me setting good reminders and it tells me when to call the people and I've been getting a bunch of business back out of it of people that I honestly last year would have never called but it's about keeping those good records and stuff like that. Um, when you send out you use clients, customers and uh, just people you've met as contact. Yeah. Make sure, you, no, well, make sure you're using different drip campaigns. There's targets. There's ones in here for commercial, ones for sellers, ones for buyers. I mean... You don't want to sell prospective sellers. Now's a great time to buy. It doesn't make sense. You want to make sure you're using the correct one for whatever it is. All right. Do you guys have any other questions about that?